Can we apply GitOps principles and processes on infrastructure? My name is Victor and you're watching Upbound channel. This is the first video in a series of videos and we do not yet have a title for that series. Nevertheless, I'm Victor and this is Upbound. If you are using Kubernetes, applying GitOps principles on applications is easy. All you have to do is pick one of the tools and basically there are two tools that matter, Argo CD and Flux. And once you pick a tool, you create manifests, push them to Git and that's about it. The rest of the work of drift detection and synchronization of the actual state, which is a Kubernetes cluster and your manifests and your desired state is done by those tools. There is nothing else for you to do after you push something to a Git repository. But if you try to apply the same thing on infrastructure, we run into problems. And the major problem is that all the leading tools in the GitOps area are designed to work with Kubernetes resources. And that means that the tool we use to manage our infrastructure needs to be based on Kubernetes resources. It needs to be able to leverage Kubernetes API, to use the control plane and all the other things that we do with Kubernetes. And there are only a few tools that can do those things on the infrastructure level and one of those or maybe even the only one is crossplay so if we want to use let's say flux to manage our GitOps processes synchronization between the states, we need to define infrastructure as Kubernetes resources, and then everything else should fall into place. With that in mind, today we are going to combine Flux and Crossplane, and those two together should enable us to manage infrastructure using GitOps processes and GitOps tools and what's or not. That was enough talk. Let's jump into the demo and let me show you how we can do all that. But before I proceed, I need to warn you, I will not go deep into crossplane and I will not go deep into flux. In this video, I want to show you what can be done. And from there on, if you're familiar with those tools, you just apply the processes. And if you're not familiar with those tools, I will provide the links with more information about flux and crossplane and whatever else I will be using. And you can just uh, go from there. Before I started recording this session, I created a Kubernetes cluster. I'm using K3D. If you're not familiar with it, the link to it will be also in the description. Anyways, you can use any Kubernetes cluster you want. It doesn't matter. What I'm about to show you works everywhere. And that's all. I haven't done anything else in advance. I only have a Kubernetes cluster and I have some credentials stored in environment variables. Anyways, all the instructions and all the commands are in a gist and the link to the gist is in the description of this video. So if you want to follow along or you want to reproduce what I'm doing, there you go. There is a gist. So the first thing we need to do is install Flux or to be more precise, we are going to bootstrap our cluster with Flux. And that means that we will not only install Flux, but also create a Git repository where the initial definitions of the Flux itself will be stored and from there on Flux will manage itself and so on and so forth. As I said before, this is not a deep dive into Flux. So let's get going and bootstrap it. Now, since Flux created the Git repository, I mean, I could have used an existing one, but I let Flux create a Git repository. I'm going to clone that repository and go there. And from there on, we are going to create some manifest that will further define our system. Now that Flux is up and running, we can install and manage Crossplane. And once we do that, we are going to jump into managing Crossplane provider and composites and a few other things. And once we are finished, it will take us maybe 10 minutes. We will have the whole system up and running and ready to manage our infrastructure. So I will add the source that will point to the Helm registry where Crossplane and other Crossplane related charts are located. And then I will create a Helm release that could use that source and also specify which chart I want to use and which version I want to use and not much more. In both cases, we are not creating anything in our Kubernetes cluster. We are just outputting manifests, which later on will push to Git and then the magic will happen. Besides crossplane, we need providers, which in my case will be AWS. In your case, it could be Google or Azure or whatever you're using. We need composites. I mean, you do not need composites. You can use crossplane to manage infrastructure directly, but composites are absolutely amazing and you should be using composites. And that's what I 
will be using. And if you're confused and you do not know what composites are, well, the link to more information is in the description as well. Anyways, we need providers and composites and a few other things that will enable Crossplane to manage infrastructure in a specific provider, in this case AWS. And I already prepared all the definitions that we will need in a Git repository. So let me show you very quickly what I actually have. In that repo, there is a composite resource definition or XRD, which is a way to create an interface that focuses on what matters, that simplifies everything, that, that removes repeatability and so on and so forth. Anyways, I have an XRD or composite resource definition that defines all the properties I will need today. And I have a composition itself. Now, in this case, composition contains everything that I might need to create a cluster in AWS, to be more specific, to create an EKS cluster. And that means that I have bundled over there, a composition with an EKS cluster, node pool, subnets, VPCs, internet gateway, and all the other things that my cluster might need without really exposing all those things to daily usage. So think of it as a bundle or a composition of resources which will be expanded and created and managed through a much simpler definition, which you will see later. So now that you saw that I have a Git repository with all the definitions, and I want to manage those definitions through GitOps, through Flux in this case, all I have to do is tell Flux that there is that repository that would be a source. So I need to create a manifest, which will be Flux source pointing to that repository. And I need a customization. This time I'm not using Helm, but customize, but uh, the logic is more or less the same. Anyways, I'm creating yet another manifest, which is Flux customization, which will provide additional parameters like, hey, this is the source you want to use, the repo. This is the directory that contains manifest. This is the frequency of synchronization and so on and so forth. We're getting close to the end. And what I should do now is push those changes to the Git repository. And then Flux will detect those changes. It will synchronize the actual into the desired state. It will do whatever needs to be done for all those things to be up and running in my Kubernetes cluster. As a result, you will notice that I'm not interacting with my Kubernetes cluster in any form or way. All I'm doing is creating manifests or modifying manifests and pushing them to Git. And that's about it. For all you know, I might not even have access to this Kubernetes cluster. And the base is done. We have everything we need. And what comes next is to manage the infrastructure. So let's say that somebody, let's say me, a different person, wants to create a cluster in AWS. What would that person need to do? The first time that person would need to provide credentials unless the credentials already exist and in this cluster they don't. So I would need to create a Kubernetes secret with authentication to AWS so that Crossplane knows how to communicate with AWS and can do stuff, whatever that stuff is. And we need a provider config which should tell Crossplane, hey, that secret, that authentication should be used with that provider, in this case with AWS provider. So provider config configures a provider using specific secret which I'm about to create. So those are two things. First, secret. And as I mentioned before, now we need config to tie the secret to a provider and that will be yet another manifest. And since we are using Flux, all I have to do is create the manifest and then push it to Git. And from there on, as you already know, Flux will do the synchronization and all the steps that are required to synchronize the two states. And this is now the moment of truth. A crossplane is running. It is managed by Flux. Providers are there. Authentication is there as well. So crossplane can do stuff in AWS. And I am now ready to create some infrastructure. And what I'm going to create is a cluster. And that cluster would be EKS with node group and internet gateway and subnets and VPCs and all the things defined in a composite resource that I briefly showed you before. But I do not need to worry about those precisely because I'm using composites. What I do need to do is to create a claim of that composite. So the kind of Kubernetes resource we want to create is called cluster claim because that's what is defined in the composite resource, again, which we saw before. Crossplane will know which composite to claim through the matching labels. And all I have to do is specify a few parameters. I could specify Kubernetes version or whatever else is defined as parameters in the composite resource definition. But in this case, I will just say, hey, I do not care about those things. I will use the default values. All I care is to have small nodes because today I'm cheap. I do not want to spend more money on this demo than I should. 
and you know what happens next or you can probably guess we have the definition and we should just push it to a git repository and let flux synchronize it between git and the cluster and then crossplane will interpret that definition and all the compositions and what's or not and it will create the required infrastructure resources and it will do more than that it will not only create like some other tools or change or modify or delete it will continuously monitor the state of the infrastructure and make sure that it is always complying to the desired state so that our infrastructure is always no matter what happens exactly the same as the desired state defined as Kubernetes resources. And now, if I retrieve the managed resources, I can see what's going on. I can list all the cross-plane resources, Kubernetes resources that were synchronized by Flux and see the status or the relation between those resources and the real infrastructure. You can see that some of them are already synchronized. Some of them are ready, meaning that whatever is defined is what is already created in AWS. And some of them are not ready because it takes a bit of time until AWS creates all the resources and they need to be created in specific order and there are interdependencies and what's or not. So to save you from boredom, I will fast forward to the end of the process. I think it takes like 15 to 20 minutes until AWS creates everything we need. Actually, I have a better idea. Instead of fast forwarding, let's go to upbound cloud and connect the upbound web interface with the crossplane running in my cluster. And like that, I can get greater visibility or potentially better visibility into what is happening and what's going on in my cluster and what is the progress with the resources and so on and so forth. To do that, I will go to Abound Cloud. If you're not registered, register. It's free. I can choose between hosted and self-hosted. Normally, I would use hosted and then let Abound Cloud manage uh, the control plane with crossplane and everything I need to run crossplane. But in this case, since crossplane is already running in my cluster I will actually use the self-hosted version and all I have to do is execute a few commands that will connect crossplane in my cluster with upbound cloud and now I have graphical user interface that shows me all the resources of the providers that were installed I can see their statuses I can see how many instances of each resource were created and so on and so forth and this time I will indeed forward to the end of the process so that we see what happens when uh, everything is created in AWS and that's about it. All the madness that you need for infrastructure is created, and yet the interface was extremely simple thanks to Crossplane Composites, and the management of those interfaces, all those manifests is done through Flux. So all we have to do is push things to Git, and Flux synchronizes that with the cluster, with Kubernetes cluster, and Crossplane takes over from there and manages that infrastructure. And as I said before, it is not one-shot management. Other tools manage your infrastructure only when you tell them to do something. Crossplane is continuously monitoring the infrastructure and making sure that it is always in the specific state, whichever state you specify through manifest. And I can prove that to you. Let's say that something happens to the node group and the node group disappears because it crashed or because somebody accidentally deleted it or whatever the reason is. I will simulate that by deleting the node group and then observing what is going to happen. As you can see, I simulated crash by deleting it and soon it will be gone. So let's fast forward a few minutes and see what happens. And there we go. We can see in AWS console that the node group is being created. With almost any other tool, the node group would uh, stay non-existent. It would not be recreated because other infrastructure tools are not having drift detection that is running continuously and are not synchronizing the two states. And all the other good things that we are used to have with applications because they are made to control play and so on and so forth. What Crossplane is doing with your infrastructure is in a way similar to what Kubernetes is doing with your applications. It is making sure that the state is persisted always, no matter what happens. On the other hand, if you would like to change some aspect of our infrastructure, let's say to change the number of nodes from one to three, increase the capacity of our cluster, all we have to do is change the manifest and push those changes to Git. And from there on, Flux will pick up those changes, apply it to the Kubernetes cluster where Crossplane is running, and Crossplane would make sure that our desires are converted into reality, meaning that there are three nodes instead of one node in AWS, and that that number is persisted 
always. Similarly, if we do not want to have some resources anymore, all we have to do is delete the manifest and push the changes to Git. I mean, remove it from the Git repository and then the same process repeats over and over again. Flux fetches information from Git, applies to Kubernetes cluster, Crossplane is running in that cluster and applies it to infrastructure. And that is how we apply GitOps principles and tooling on infrastructure. Don't leave just yet. Stop. Let me know in the comments what would you like to see next uh, that is somehow related with cross-plane infrastructure or whatever we are doing. And I will make sure that that's the subject of one of the upcoming videos. So let me know in the comments what would you like to see or which problems you're having that I might be able to help you solving. See you next time. Cheers.